from what I can remember from the day I was born, it was always hard time, welfare, not much food, no money, crime infesting neighborhoods, murders, um, pimps, prostitutes, um, drugs, and um, it was um, survival of the fittest. And um, I had an older brother who was five years older than me, so he didn't spend much time around the house. He was in the prog programs. He was um, he was very smart and intelligent. He was the special kid on the block that was always in school. And um, me and my sister got caught up in the street life. So um, I was bullied a lot as a kid. I used to have pigeons, and at one particular time, some bully grabbed one of my pigeons and ripped his head off. And that was the first time I ever got into a fight. And I and I kind of like won. I was young, like nine, but I kind of like won. And um, I like fighting ever since because it gave me attention. People would say, hey, you was that guy that beat that big kid up. You was that guy. And I was like, everybody knew me from that, in that incident. And so after that, older kids would bring other kids from different neighborhoods around my neighborhood and they would pay us to fight each other. And that's how I started fighting. I probably had, wow, in my life, I probably had 400 fights. How many? 400. Wow. Well, in your professional career, you no, had like no, no. 50, that's 50, yeah, that's like 50 or 60. Yeah. The street that I had 400. Wow. And then, and you were in trouble with the law, I know, early yeah. in the stage, right? And when did you get introduced to drugs? Oh, I've been drugs since I was nine years old. Wow. What kind of drugs yeah. back then? Cocaine, marijuana, alcohol, liquor. Because when I was younger, you know, my mother who wasn't educated on drugs and alcohol. I said, you know, she'd been in college. In order to perhaps get me to go to sleep, I was making a lot of noise. She would give me alcohol. Wow. Thinking I would go to sleep, you know. Yeah. At that time. And so um, I started getting into a lot of trouble. By the time I was 12, I was arrested probably 40 times. Yeah. Everybody in the juvenile and the police um, department knew my name. Everybody, I was, you know, the regular. And so eventually I, they sent me away and I was in this place. They sent me there for two years. And so I'm there and um, eventually I get shipped away to another reformatory upstate New York. And I meet this gentleman named Bobby Stewart, who's a former professional fighter. Not a big time fighter, but just a former professional fighter. Four 10 round fights, never big time. And he, every weekend he started, um, he would box with the kids. And then one uh, one um, particular day he boxed me and he beat the shit out of me, but I took the beat and he hit me in the stomach. I fell down, I got back up, but he kept beating the shit out of me. But I took it and he thought that was, um, a badge of courage. And so he, he, he started boxing me, started teaching me how to box. And then um, eventually I was, what, 13 then, I became too good. So he had said, I have to take you somewhere else for someone that could take you to the next level. And so I went and I met Customato. And uh, meeting him was... Uh, Did I, you know who he was? Not, like I had he no idea. I had no, not, had no idea about boxes. Wow. I was just doing this stuff. And I boxed with Bobby and um, Bobby really had, he really, he, he like, Bloody my nose, he beat me up pretty bad that particular time because I was really putting it on, trying to impress Cuss. And Cuss said, this is the next champion, providing he doesn't um, lose interest. So he said, how old he was? And I said, it, um, he's 13. And then Cuss said, he's lying. He doesn't want to go to prison with the grown adults. So he said he was 13. <laughs> wow. And um, so Bobby Stewart, because everything Cuss says is the Bible. And so he said, tell me the truth. After all these years, I've been there two years with him, and I said, tell me the truth, how old are you? I said, I'm 13, I'm 13. He said, tell me the truth, I said, I'm 13. So he got my birth certificate, found out I was 13, and then cussing those guys just on the magnet. I didn't even agree to it. They said, this is what you're gonna do. You're gonna be heavyweight champ, you're gonna win the Olympics, you're gonna win the gold medal, you're gonna do this, and you're gonna become heavyweight champ, you're gonna be this and that. And I didn't want him to think I was afraid. My whole life uh, lived with all my ego. Just I was a, I was a, I was a, I had a I was a megalomaniac with a low self esteem, you know. Um, if you if you said something, you know, if you said something, I always say I'm nobody, I'm nobody. But if you but if it's something I want to accomplish, I'm the greatest. I'm a god. I can still accomplish something. But as far as my perspective on myself, I'm shit. Yeah. Look at the life I come from. Even though I'm making all the money in the world, but look at me, my mother, my father, they're sex workers. What the fuck am I? Who am I? I'm a piece of shit. But I'm the highest paid athlete in the world. I'm the baddest man so-called on the planet. But that's the low self-esteem that um, I guess that I received. So I guess that's what cuts worked on my ego. My ego is out of this world. I used to, um, I thought people had to, I thought people should carry me. I shouldn't walk. It was just, but that's all I had to succeed. So I'm in prison. I'm talking to my car dealer. And my car dealer is talking about some friend of mine that bought cars from him, but never paid him all the money. 
so he said, Mike, so if they don't pay me all my money for the car, I'm going to trade their car in and get some animals like horses and stuff. I said, what? You can buy horses? He said, yeah, I know a guy that sells horses, tigers, cougars, penguins, all kind of animals, <laughs> right? And I said, really? What? He said, wouldn't that be cool, Mike, if you had your, one of your Ferraris and you had your tiger in you? I said, that would be very cool. <laughs> and so I said, um, <coughs> I, I explained, I said, well, why don't you tell um, the dealer to send me a couple of uh, cubs, right? And so I'm at my house in Ohio, and my wife at the time is 19, but she came to visit me, right? And she came to visit me. As soon as she came to visit me, the cubs came that day, boom. And she's there when we were playing with the cubs. That's the first time I ever interacted with cubs. I had no experience with cubs. I didn't know they're capable of killing you at a certain particular time in their life. And, um, I worked out. It was lucky for me. My cats, I had them for 14, 15 years. They never killed me. I heard well, That's a good sign. <laughs> yeah. I look at myself with nothing. I'm just pale and I'm willing to do anything to myself to improve to be the best. I'm, used, I'm willing to sacrifice my body. I'm used, willing to sacrifice my psychological health to just be the best in the world. And that's what really sacrifices you. really have to sacrifice your life, regardless if it's a marriage. Sometimes you have to sacrifice your life for a marriage or sacrifice your life for a goal you want to accomplish and that's the goal that I, the rule that I've always taken is sacrifice and be objective. He used to say though that part of that sacrifice is you get up at 4 a.m. to run in the snow and you told me back then it's like Tony I do this because I know my opponent won't. That was exactly. a little bit, is that what true? It's all about sacrifice. I do what he's not willing to do. Yes. You know what I mean? If you fight, if you're rolling, running at two in the morning in the snow and the blizzard, I trust me he's not going to want to do it. He's going to get on the treadmill. Yeah. You know? And you, you used to say that uh, we had those urgent conversations. I remember you saying to me, Tony, fighting's easy. It's like, I prepare, I train so hard that the fight feels like, you know, it's it's easy. Was that true? Yeah, exactly. Because you yeah. trained so damn hard. Exactly. That's why I had a lot of one easy one round knockouts. 